Hello, everybody. Welcome to Moonshine and Music, episode one, two, three, five. Oh my goodness. Episode five. I'm your host, Joe Shelton. Today's special guest is Chris Birch. And Chris is one of the hardest working guys in the indie music scene. I mean, I think he plays like 47 shows a week. He's all over the place. I mean, he plays in Indianapolis. I've seen him play in hard rock cafes like all over the country. Uh, Chris is also a really good friend of mine for a couple of years now. We've been uh, good friends in the music scene here and uh, try to help each other out whenever we can. And today we're gonna have a nice little interview with Chris and he's gonna talk about his music and his new band and um, you know how he grew up and uh, you get to hear all of his origin story and all that good stuff. And then he's going to rock out for us at the end of the program and play some of those great tunes that we all know Chris Birch is capable of. And if you haven't heard Chris before, this is your opportunity. Like, buckle up your seatbelt if you're listening in the car. If you're watching us on YouTube, sit back in your easy chair, project it up onto your 60-inch because it is going to be killer. I guarantee it. So um, buckle up and get ready. A quick word. Eat New Media is our sponsor and our production company. And you can go to eatnewmedia.com and check out their wares. And if you need somebody to do a video for you, then send them a little message and they will get back to you and they will work out a program for you that is really, really good. Secondarily, uh, if you want to be a sponsor of the show, please contact me at joe at moonshinamusic.com and I will get back to you as soon as possible because we really, really could use your help and we could put your branding up on Moonshine and Music and all over the internet and all of those places and uh, maybe drive a little bit of extra traffic to your website or your business. So that's what we're uh, looking for today. Chris Birch is coming up now on Moonshine and Music. <laughs> All right, today we got Chris Birch here with Moonshine and Music, and um, welcome to Moonshine and Music. Uh, Thanks for having me. Uh, I, our show is geared toward trying to make uh, local artists get a little more uh, known out there, um, you know, about their uh, who they are and what they are into. Not just, you know, uh, I know you play a lot of shows around town, you, a lot of people have seen you play, but, you know, get to know who you are. Uh, and, of course, we'll have you play some music a little later. Uh, so, I mean, to start off, where, where did you grow up? I grew up about an hour north of Indy. Um, all my family's from Ohio. We moved here when I was a little kid to Alexandria. Um, small town, like 6,000 people or something like that. And I uh, spent my whole life wanting to leave there. And when I was 18, <laughs> I, uh, I left there. And I went down to IU for four years. And when I graduated, moved out to Arizona. Oh, and, well, uh, what was in Arizona? What did you do out there? Um, well, I just found a job out there, and I played in a band out there for five or six years. And when my wife and I had our daughter, we moved back to Indiana, and uh, but decided on Indy, Indianapolis. Well, what's the name of the band out there? What was the Every Letter? That was uh, my main thing out there. And did you have records with them, or yeah, are those still available? I don't know if I've ever heard any of them. Probably not. I mean, I can send them to you. If I... Oh, that'd be <laughs> yeah. sweet. Yeah, I love that old. Uh, you know, I love hearing yeah. everybody's. Uh, you know, growing yeah, up, yeah, that, that was right before. That was like right at the end of MySpace and like the beginning of like Facebook band profiles and stuff. So it's like everyone was kind of like sorting through the social media, like trying to figure it out. Because like I was like the age group where it's like just older than like it, we're savvy with the social media stuff, and we were playing catch up for a long time with that. But we toured the Southwest and were a band for a few years, and yeah, that's that's right. always been my main thing. Was you know. Being a, a rock in a rock band, you know. Well, um, what did your what did your parents do growing up? Did you uh... like for a living? Yeah, for a living. Yeah. Well, well, my dad he worked for General Motors, and that's why we moved to Indiana. He got transferred from his plant in Ohio to the one in Marion, 
and uh, he still works there. And my mom, she was a homemaker when we were little, and then she uh, became like a permanent substitute, like in school substitute for uh, my elementary school once my sister was there, my younger sister, and uh, then eventually became the librarian there. So you... Um, She's retired now. Oh, well, that's, like, that's cool. I, um, so you were, grew up with a, a factory dad. Yeah. 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 I, my, my dad was a, uh, worked in a Westinghouse. Okay. And, and then he was a postman. And uh, so I know all that union stuff and all yeah, that. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting ride. It's an interesting perspective on life. You get living in the middle of nowhere with a factory dad, you know. Does that so. uh, fill into your songwriting? Um, I think uh, more so my work ethic than my songwriting, I guess, yeah. You mean it makes you work harder? Or? Yeah, just like, you know, it's kind of like that blue-collar background and uh, watching him, you know, put his nose down and make the drive every day and go to work every day and come home and be a good dad every day and uh, do what he needed to do for his family, you know. Yeah, I've been up to Alexandria. Uh, we used to go up there. They have an auction house up there we would go to when we were dead broke and we would buy furniture yeah, yeah. for $5 couches yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and that kind of stuff. So I've been in that area. Um, you're, uh, so when you came back to Indy, you've, have you just been playing solo? or? I've had a few. Oh, well, I've had several bands that haven't got off, you know, seen the stage. We've been back for, back in Indiana for, almost five years now, I think. Um, I had a band for a while called White River Rollers. Um, we were together for almost a year. And uh, that was, you know, all right, we did some cool stuff. We were in the middle of recording when we broke up. And I had a, took some time off when my son was born. He's three now. And when he was born is when I really started focusing on doing the solo thing. I was like, oh, you know, I feel like I can make some money doing this. And I wasn't happy doing the career I've been doing for almost a decade at that point, and I needed a change. So I kind of shifted gears from original band to corner of the bar for three or four hours and playing a bunch of covers. And I mix in originals and stuff too, and I still do showcases. But I guess shifting my mindset to being versatile and doing what I need to make my living, you know, being a musician. So what was your career for the... I worked in mental health with uh, kids for a long time at hospitals um, where, for kids who were a danger to themselves or others. And that uh, that got, got at me after almost a decade and I didn't feel like I was as good at it as I used to be and needed to change, you know? Yeah. Well, that's got to be a tough thing to work in. I mean, because you see the successes and failures all the time and... You know, and there's nothing you can do when, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when it doesn't go right. It's just you know, any health profession, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was starting to wear at me, you know, a couple of years before I decided to move on from it. But it was really when we had started having kids. I was just like, I don't feel like I can do that all day and come home and be the dad that I want to be. You know, it's just too mentally taxing, I guess, or emotionally, too. So you got yeah. uh, two kids, right? Yeah, five and three. Five and three? Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, uh, scattering going on around the house, yeah. scampering, throwing things. Yeah. Screaming, always, yelling. Always. Do they play music? Are they into music as well? Or? They are. Um, they wanted a drum set for Christmas, so I got on the drum set. And uh, they've been digging that, especially we left it upstairs for a while after Christmas. Uh, we set it up by the tree. And... Uh, they were playing it every day when it was upstairs. Now it's downstairs, and they kind of forget about it. And I'm like, hey, you guys want to go play drums? And then they want to, but it's out of sight, out of mind at the moment. But, yeah, they love music. Uh, my daughter's always been singing and dancing. She came out singing and dancing. And um, my son definitely likes music, too, but it's hard to tell if it's going to be Anything a yet, passion. Yeah. You know? right. <laughs> but it's in my daughter. Like You can see it, you know. For sure. Well, that's really cool. I uh, I think I saw them uh, at Square Cat Vinyl. Yeah. And we, they were they were dancing up there. Uh, yeah, we went it, to go see Cole. Cole Woodruff yeah, was playing. Yeah. And uh, I, I was like, uh, they they <laughs> they were just totally mm -hmm. into the show. Yeah, they think they own the place whenever we go to shows because they're used, they usually go see me and it's like they know I don't care if they come up and like 
you know, mess with my stuff while I'm playing or whatever, you know. And so they think they can just do that anytime. <laughs> and they think I know every musician in the world because I know so many. I'm like always having them listen to my friend's music and stuff like that. But like my daughter loves uh, the Goo Goo Dolls. And so like we'll watch like videos of the Goo Goo Dolls and she be like, I want to meet him. When can we go see him? You know, John Resnick is like, well, I don't know him. You know, we're not like friends, you know, like he's just famous. Like, you know, trying to explain that to, you know, she's so she thinks you're four. famous, right? I don't know. I don't think she even knows what famous means, you know, <laughs> trying to explain that concept to little kids is kind of difficult, but because, you know, especially now with social media, like they see videos of my friends on the computer and phones as well as Foo Fighters and the Killers and Jeff Buckley and whatever you know it's all just kind of blends together you know like it's just music which is how it should be but uh, well doesn't that feel like I mean you know uh, stretching out to that topic you know the social media world there it makes it seem like a lot of people are more famous than they are sure and also um, it levels the playing field for musicians like us absolutely man you know you know, um, at Square Cat, for example, you know, I showed up to, I played one their Christmas extravaganza this past year with my percussionist, Justin, um, and they just had two guys set up with video cameras, and they were recording a song for free for everybody, and it's professional, high definition, couple different camera angles, and it's just like, you know, I watch videos all the time that are just like that from radio shows and stuff of my favorite bands, and it looks and sounds just like that you know you're right it just kind of it gives everyone the tools the tools that we have now are you know so much more accessible than they used to be yeah um so uh have you worked on a new record lately or are you i keep working on one and then abandoning it i've been doing that for about four years you know so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i don't really have a whole lot to say about that other than uh i will eventually you know I've recorded tons of stuff with different groups, different projects, and I, if I'm not happy with it, I don't release it, and I'm never happy with it. So, whenever whenever I'm happy with it, I'll release something. Yeah, <laughs> we all want to hear yeah. anything that you come up with. Yeah, you know, yeah. I feel like sometimes I'll I'll just record voice voice memos on my iPhone, and like that sounds better than what I spent all this time on in the studio, because it's just real. It's just there, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I noticed that you uh, were in a, recently in a new band. Yeah, I have a guy. That, yeah, that's a, what I was going to bring up next. I do have a new band, finally. We just played our first show. We were called Neon Black, and it's just a four piece rock and roll band. And um, we started almost a year ago. And then one of our guys was going through a lot of life changes, and uh, we took about six months off. And then we started up again at the beginning of the year. And we booked a show right away to kind of like keep us honest and like you know we gotta we have something we have to do now so we have to <laughs> we have to get ready for it right and uh, the first show went really really well I was really happy with it everyone was really happy with it we haven't been like big time promoting it or anything yet we're gonna wait till we have have recordings and that's really what my next recording project is gonna be is recording at least an EP with that group we'll probably start with a single um, we don't have a time time frame or anything yet but it'll probably be within the next couple months we'll get in the studio and uh decide what we want to do with that uh, i um i i find it interesting because recently i i worked with a, a band and um like uh going you know because i've been doing the solo thing myself for like three years and um switching to that uh that the, it's like your whole brain has to shift do you mm -hmm. find that's true as well absolutely like, um and really my whole life i have to like prepare mentally prepare myself for what i'm doing that day what my role is that day whether it's like i don't have anything like i have to be doing like i'm a, just a dad today and <laughs> or which is a hard job it is a hard job and it's like i have to like mentally prepare myself the hardest days are once we get to friday and i know i have a gig and it's my fifth day in a row of being home with the kids and I'm pulling my hair out and trying to get ready for a show, trying to hydrate, trying to get my voice ready, get my mind right so I can go do what, do my job outside of my home job, you know. And uh, that's definitely a big shift. But 
the biggest difference for me with solo stuff versus being in a band is my writing. I feel like I write best when I have a group, have a band, and I know who my players are, and I know how they play, and leaving the space for them. And I also, I feel like I'm good and comfortable leading a band and promoting a band. It's really hard for me to be like, hey, listen to Chris Birch. Chris Birch is great. This is awesome. Listen to this. Listen to Chris Birch. Listen to Chris Birch. Hey, Chris Birch. Chris Birch, Chris Birch. <laughs> and I really hate that. Um, but it's necessary because that's what my that's, brand that's is. That's the deal, right? You know, yeah. I feel a lot more comfortable saying, hey, I've got this great band. These awesome guys that I play with, called, we're called Neon Black. And it's a team. And it's, a, you know, it's not Chris Birch, Chris Birch, Chris Birch. It's, you know. It's our it's our group. It's our thing. It's our gang. It's our you know whatever you want to call it, and it's also that's what I've always musically been best at too. I've, I'm still learning how to be a solo act. I've been pretty lucky and um, had have had a lot have you know been able to work my butt off and get opportunities and keep keep those things working for me. Um, but it's like. I, I still feel a lot more comfortable when I've got three or four other people around me and we're performing something that we've all, you know, worked on together. It's not, you know, me playing a bunch of Tom Petty songs in the corner of a bar, you know. Well, you know, whenever I've seen you play, I've always dug your original stuff more. I mean, because I can hear everybody, you know, cover stuff. Sure, sure. And then you'll pull out, you know, you'll be going to the set and then all of a sudden you'll like say, you know what, we're going to play a couple of mine. And, uh, you know, as a musician, that, like, perks me up. I, I think it does for all, yeah. any musicians that you have in the crowd, pretty much. When you say original, you can probably see them out there going, oh, yeah. well, I'm going to listen now. Yeah, whenever you I know? go to shows, I'm like, hey, can we hear original, you know? And I, I hope that translates, but, you know, that's not, that's hard to, for bars and venues to want to pay, pay for that, you know? Um, they want the covers, they want the songs that people know. But I've been fortunate to find a lot of places. Uh, one of my favorite places I got to play at last night was um, Lock Miller's downtown. And they always just let me do what I want. Last night I did 50-50 for three hours. Just rotated cover original, cover original, cover original. And that's the first time I've done that for a whole night. That was, that was pretty fun. And it was something different for me. So it was like I was a little bit more mentally engaged because I kind of have like... My first set is usually these songs, and my second set is usually these songs, and like this, it's like actively thinking about it while I was playing, and it wasn't just like, oh yeah, I usually play this one next. It was some, <laughs> it was something different for me, and I think it was cool too. I think uh, I think it's good for me to have those different types of venues too. I think I've grown a lot as a musician playing the cover gigs too, because when I started doing it, I didn't know hardly any covers. I knew I had a handful that I'd been playing my whole life. I never, when I started learning to play, I wasn't learning songs. I was like, I'd find out, figure out some chords, you know, and make a song out of it. And like, that's always what I wanted to do was write. Um, I have, I've had to learn to love the cover thing. And, um, do you find that like doing, um, I mean, I, 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 I'm, you know, this is a really curious question for me. Um, do you find that doing a couple covers opens them up to listening to your originals? You know, you know, everyone says that. Does it for you or? I not? I never really thought that. You know, um, I think really, you know, people just like what they like, and uh, you know, they might like like for example, last night is a good example of this. So these people weren't paying attention all night. This is like probably the beginning of my third hour. So I was like, oh, what, what haven't I done? I haven't done any country tonight. So I did a Johnny Cash song. And they were like, oh, yeah. And they got up and were like, oh, this is great. And they were sitting near me. And about 20 seconds into the song, they went outside and smoked. So it's just like, it doesn't really matter, you know? <laughs> and uh, I've also had people who were dead si silent the whole night, didn't pay attention at all, came up at the end of my set and like, that was great. And like, give me a good tip or something, you know? Or want to buy CDs. And it's just like, it's so hard to tell. It's so hard to know I think that's one of the biggest things <clears throat> that I've had trouble with is my confidence <clears throat> in going into each night knowing that it's going to be fine because I'm always want to make a good impression a big impression or as big as I can and uh, 
I also find that easier to do with a rock band than just my guitar in the corner at an appropriate restaurant volume. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's another thing too, like the mental aspect of it. Like, I'm not going to feel like a rock star tonight. That's not what this is about. This is just my job. This is me going to the office, you know? And uh, knowing the difference between those gigs is something that's humbling, but necessary to survive doing what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I, I guess like when you go, like I saw you play at the White Rabbit, and like when you're playing that gig, it's like you're a rock star tonight, because mm -hmm. everybody's there to see music. They're right. not there necessarily for any other reason. Yeah, they They're, paid money to they, go see music. They paid money to go see music. They're gonna pay attention, you know, and yeah. all of that. And then there's you know. You're playing in the corner at Lock Miller's Pub, mm -hmm. and they're there to have dinner. Sure. And you know. Oh, I didn't know you were having music tonight. That's kind of yeah. cool. You know. Yeah. yeah. And whenever you sing one they really like or whatever, they you know yeah. uh, get into it. I, I can see that. Well, uh, do you want to do some songs for us uh, sure. over here? Um, we'll uh, we'll get you all set up. We'll be back right back after uh, a short break and have some music from Chris Birch. Next week on Moonshine and Music, Ray Hoskins is in studio. Ray is going to give us some of his great tunes that are coming up off of his upcoming record that he's working on right now in studio. And he's going to tell you a little bit about himself and where he grew up and all those things like everyone else does here on Moonshine and Music. But listen to this awesome Ray Hoskins tune. Don't have babies or crazy people cause they never go away. Crazy too. All right, so I'm gonna do a few songs for you. I'm gonna start with a, an old one where I've been, and then I'll do a kind of where I am and a one where I'm going. So this one uh, is a song called "So Far." I wrote when I was living out in Arizona for my uh, band, Every Letter.
my thank you. Um, this next one is a song that's on uh, my EP that I released a few years ago. Um, it's a song I wrote for my daughter. Well, we brought you back to the house that we knew, but nothing felt the same. And we bent it tall down the walls just to build them new. song um, that only a few people have heard so far, so it's kind of an exclusive for you. All right. uh, this is not a band song, it's a solo song, but uh, it's called, um, well, I don't have a full title yet, so right now I'm calling it Proof, but it might change. There ain't nothing to say That my eyes ain't given away Circling now I forgot how To treat you like I should To treat you like I should Yeah. 
song the only song that really works acoustic from my new band um, this one's called I'm Without You Anyway Thanks for having me, guys. Great job, Chris Burge. 
Hey, thank you for joining us today on Moonshine and Music. I hope you enjoyed the show. Next week, come back in. Ray Hoskins is going to be here. He's going to give you the lowdown and the skinny on his tunes and how he writes songs. And he's going to play a little bit for you, just like everyone else does that shows up here. We really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button now or uh, subscribe to us on iTunes or Podbean uh, for the audio version of the podcast. We really, really appreciate all you guys listening and spreading the word and sharing this around the internet. It's been fantastic talking to all of you, and I've had lots and lots of private messages about how good the show is. And um, if you have any uh, hints or anything you want to give us or any guests that you'd like to suggest or if you want to be a guest and you're an artist out there, an independent artist, and you want to be on Moonshine of Music, then send me a note, joe at moonshineofmusic.com, and we will get back to you. Um, so I appreciate that, and have a great, great, great Sunday and the rest of your week. Go check out some of our back episodes on YouTube, iTunes, and Podbean. I mean, we've had great shows so far, and this is our fifth one. And, uh, you know, we've got many more coming up in the future. Ray Hoskins next week. The week after that, a really huge special guest that we're going to announce to you this week sometime. So please stay tuned for that announcement. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Thank you for joining us on Moonshine and Music. Moonshine and Music is a presentation of Eat New Media in association with Not Less Entertainment. Producers for today's program are Brandon Lay and Joe Shelton. Be sure to join us next time on Moonshine and Music.